their your luster voice. Vice President Mueller? Here. President Feldman? Here. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask for Ken, I guess, with your flag. You got your flag? To do the Unfortunately. Unfortunately, I'd like to defer to John Mueller. I, I don't have my flag up here. Sorry. Okay, John, you got your flag? <clears throat> yes, sir. Here we go. I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag. To the flag of, of the United, United States, States, States of America, of America, America and to the and Republic, and to the Republic which for which it stands, which it stands one, nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty. liberty and justice, justice for all. For all. For Ukraine. Slava Ukraine. Okay. Time for public comment. <clears throat> Do um, we have any people from the public here? I uh, don't see any. We have one person. If not, I'm going to uh, go to the first item, number four, which is to consider and reaffirm resolution 202106, making findings pursuant to Assembly Bill 361, that the proclaimed state of emergency continues to impact the ability to meet safely in person. Uh, any comments on that one? I'd like, okay. I'd like that this be the last meeting that we Zoom because I think uh, all the mask requirements have basically been lifted in the state of California, unless I'm misreading the ordinances. Um, I think that we've been meeting virtually and Zoom-wise for many, 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 many months, far too many. However, before we just uh, obviate this need, I'm going to ask staff to look into this and make a proposal that tells us what they think they can do to meet that objective. It may not be quite the next meeting, but I think we need to have some window or some target to bring these back to real time because there are a number of things involved with that. So I want to give Mary and staff a chance to comment on that and tell us next time what they think the possibilities are. Does that make sense to you? Okay, so let's do that, Mary. Is that okay? We'll take yes, that, yes, that's that fine. Item for yes, we were... the next one. Thank yes. you. And you also have an agenda Thanks. item uh, kind of on this issue later on this meeting's agenda, so you can talk about it in more detail then. Yeah, but that's different. This is the context of boards and meetings. That's more the public access and the opening of the office. We'll talk to that as well. There may be two different uh, windows, two different time frames. So we need to talk about that, but definitely should be something we discuss next time. I agree. Thank you. Um, consent calendar. Any we need to vote. Calendar? I'm sorry. You need, you need a motion, I think. We need a motion. <clears throat> we need a motion to accept so the, uh, can I have a motion on that one? To, yeah, sure. Should I reaffirm that resolution then? I move that we uh, um, make the finding pursuant to Assembly Bill 361 that the proclaimed state of emergency continues to impact our ability to meet safely in person. And so I'll second that. Uh, meet remotely. I have a second? Yes, I'll second yeah, that. Chris seconded it. Okay, thanks, Chris. Didn't hear that. Okay, uh, okay. can we take a vote, please? Uh, Director Coverdale? Yes. Director M Michelson? Yes. Director Reynolds? Yes. Vice President Muller? Aye. President Feldman? Yes. Okay. Now, consent calendar. Are there any items on the consent calendar that any directors wish to discuss or to take off the agenda for further discussion later? Uh, John? Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. I would like to uh, uh, share with the uh, board and staff. I reviewed the financial 
uh, documents for February. And I think the most important thing to comment about is you could see the cost of doing business is rising. This was a February was a quite a sum of money and I'd like our customers to realize we are doing good things, but it, uh, it the price of things I'm sure are gonna be going up for everybody. Okay, John, thank you for the comment. Any other comments, requests to take off anything for discussion? If not, then uh, we can uh, have a motion to accept the minutes. What you do with my place? Thank you. Just pay attention. Anybody want to move? Um, to Mr. President, I move that we accept the uh, uh, calendar as the uh, as the consent calendar as prepared and presented with the uh, comments uh, at the review of the financials by uh, Director Muller. I'll second okay, it. You have a second? John will second it. I don't come up. Okay, we have a vote, Lisa. Director Coverdell. Aye. Director Michelson. Yes. Director Reynolds. Okay, uh, oh, Vice no. President Muller. Aye. Vice President Feldman. I mean, President Feldman, excuse me. Yes. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Lisa. Okay, six, meetings attended, director comments. Anybody want to share any uh, meetings or have any comments? Yes, this is John, uh, Mr. Chair and board members. I do have a, a couple of brief reports here, if I may. Um, okay. Yesterday, I was one of uh, four candidates that have applied for the position of uh, Aqua Region 5 board member. And there were really four great qualified candidates. And I was very pleased after being brief and uh, discussing the future of California water, I was selected to become Region 5's board member from Coastside County Water District. So I was. Oh, very, that's, uh, thank you. I was. Good very, news. Way very, to go. I'm, very, I'm impressed, but I'm not surprised. Well, thank you. I don't you. know why. I just, uh, yeah. just then, thought you had a good shot at it. Well, thank you. There were good candidates. Well, that was great. But anyway, then, <clears throat> uh, number two, quickly here, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm not sure if staff's aware. I came across uh, state low income. Household water debt relief. Are we familiar with that staff? Did we pick uh, up from what agency? From the state of California. So we, um, you know, certainly if, if you want to send what you have, I can see what if that's something we've looked at. Okay. It, okay very good. And then. Right. Uh, um, Last one, just personally here while I have a moment, uh, I've been attending SVIP training. I am now in the uh, approved to be trainee for sheriff's volunteer and policing for San Mateo County Sheriff. So I'm I'm in training for a few weeks. <laughs> I got nothing else to do, but all oh, well. <laughs> Thank you. You're, you're a busy man. Just That's remember now, behave yourself in front of John. Wherever you see him and whatever you're doing, just be straight up and behave yourself. Now we're uh, I want to just comment on his selection. I think it's a pretty important and also really in the feather in our cap because uh, we're now on the radar as one of the communities that has someone on the board, Region 5. There are 457 members of ACWA and X number in Region 5. And it's always good to be out there in front and have our name known and be, have people be aware of us in our community. And I think this is always good for uh, our, uh, our uh, presence in the environment and in the business. So thanks again, John, for taking the effort and being willing to do the work because there's a lot of work involved in this. Thing. All right, next is <clears throat> general business. First thing on the agenda is a review of proposed ordinance declaring a water shortage emergency. Fred and read the whole text off here. I'm gonna let Mary uh, and Kathleen take over and talk to it. It's much easier that way. 
and they'll say it all anyway. So here you go. So I'm going to defer to the expert Kathleen on this one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so staff is uh, presenting uh, a, an ordinance, a draft or proposed ordinance, um, which is declaring a water shortage emergency and will implement mandatory water use restrictions. Um, we're not asking for the board to uh, take any action on it tonight. It is, it is just uh, being presented for discussion. Uh, the second thing that staff would like to do is confirm that um, the public hearing for this ordinance will be on March 24th uh, at our um, at a special board meeting at 7 p.m. So we can do that uh, at the end of my presentation. But that that's something else I would like to uh, do so that we can let the public know when the board when the official public hearing for it is going to be. So there's no surprise. Uh, it looks like a third year of drought conditions for California. And those drought conditions do include all of um, the watersheds that we, uh, that Coastside County Water District gets their water from. Um, and we've also had San Francisco uh, SFPUC uh, declare a water shortage emergency. And we've had the state of California um, adopt emergency conservation regulations. So all of these um, facts, conditions, whatever, <laughs> they are what is motivating Coastside County Water District to propose adopting this ordinance. Um, so the ordinance itself is, um, drafted to try to rede reduce total water sales, just sales, by 17%, uh, by eliminating water waste and reducing irrigation. And um, the different sectors of water use, it, we're not asking for every single person to reduce by 17%. Each sector will have their own goals to meet. and. Um, the focus is mainly on outdoor and irrigation water, and we're hoping to reduce that by 50% to meet that total 17% reduction in uh, water sales. And this, this is for um, calendar year 2022 is what we're looking at. So the ordinance itself is broken down into sections. And um, the first section is always a fun one for findings and determination. Those are those two pages of whereases where the district lays out the conditions that exist um, that uh, are motivating the district to adopt this ordinance. The second section is um, definitions where we define certain terms that are used in the ordinance to better help um, uh, people to understand how the ordinance will be applied. The third section of the ordinance is the declaration of a water shortage emergency. Um, this, this is important because it, it also kind of sets the stage for why we're asking for mandatory reductions in water use. Then the fourth section is uh, the really long one, which has all of the prohibitions and restricted activities in the promotion of uh, water conservation and to prevent water waste in our service area. The first uh, part in section four under A, those are the um, restrictions and prohibitions that the state of California adopted um, through a special resolution. And that resolution is attachment B of the staff report if you wanted to read it. So we included the state's um, uh, mandatory requirements there. Uh, section B lists the um, prohibited actions for all customers to prevent water waste, which is part of a lot of these are were found in our ordinance 2008-01, which is normally applied even in normal times, but I wanted to repeat it since we're now in, in a water shortage emergency that they still apply 
during this water shortage emergency. Um, under 4C, we have specific end user requirements. So I discussed some portable meter um, restrictions, which um, I'm just reinforcing basically our existing requirements. Uh, here we're asking restaurants or, and other establishments that to serve uh, food and drinks that um, to only serve water upon request, which is something we did during the last uh, drought. Um, we're asking um, the operators of hotels, motels, uh, to offer their guests the uh, option of not having their linens laundered every day. So that, that too was something that we did in the last drought ordinance. Um, and then four is, we're, we're, it's vol we're asking our residential customers, so the single family residential customers and our multifamily residential customers to achieve voluntarily um, a maximum of 50 gallons per day per person. Um, and so that's the goal that we're, ask that we're asking our res residential customers to meet. Um, and that 50 gallons per day per person does include, it does include outdoor irrigation too. So we have many customers who are already meeting this, um, but there. Are, but for some, this will be uh, definitely a, a goal that they will have to work at hard at meeting. And it is voluntary. There are no fines or penalties involved if they go over. So this is where we're really going to push and start educating the, our uh, residential customers on how to meet that 50 gallons per day per person. So the next section um, again has mandatory restrictions on outdoor irrigation, which is important since again, we're looking for most of our water savings to come from uh, the outdoor um, uses of water. Um, so we're doing what we did similarly at the in the last drought, where we're going to limit spray irrigation to days of the week, um, to the, and we're limiting the times of day. So we don't want irrigate, spray irrigation happening between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Um, it would be best in the evening hours or early morning hours. Um, and for the months of um, October through, um, I should say March through September, we're going to allow two days a week of spray irrigation. Um, and then in the winter months, we're going to go down to one to one day per week to try to get that savings. So um, again, these restrictions are for spray irrigation systems. If you have what is defined as a low volume irrigation system, um, also referred to as drip irrigation systems, you don't have this, the same um, uh, restrictions on days of the week and the, the times that each station can be on, um, or even you can have them on during the day. Um, so that's an important distinction that I just wanted to point out. Um, and it, again, it's something that we did during the last drought. So I think our customers will be familiar with that. Um, some of the other, um, irrigation that's allowed to happen um, without the restrictions of days of the week and time of day is some hand watering. Like if you use a garden hose, as long as it has the shut off valve on it, if you have water you've collected from inside your house that you want to apply to your um, garden and from a bucket, you can do that at any time. Um, if you ha have like bubblers for your trees, you can use those. Um, and if you need to make a repair on your irrigation system for very short periods of time, you're allowed to turn it on uh, to check those repairs and make sure they were made. And of course, if someone has like a gray water system, a, a legal gray water system, one of the most common is referred to as um, laundry to landscape, where you divert some of your water to your um, your to irrigate your uh, landscape, that's um, allowed to be done at any time also. So the restrictions, uh, which this is a question I get um, 
very often is how are we going to restrict the golf course irrigation? So the golf courses have uh, their own source of water, but they do supplement it with, with our water. So we're asking the golf course to reduce the water they purchase from us 50% from fiscal year ending in 2020. And we're also, um, they will be allowed to irrigate their playing their greens, um, but the ornamental landscaping around the golf course will be subject to the restrictions uh, on irrigation. So, um, so that's how we're going to approach um, trying to get the reduction from the golf course. And then our one untreated water customer, um, they also will be limited to 50% of their fiscal year ending in 2020 purchases. Um, because during a water supply emergency, we don't have enough water to meet 100% of their demand. So we're, we're asking that com customer to reduce by 50% also. And all we supply them is irrigation water. Yep, may yes. I ask? Please, Kevin, um, interrupt, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, sure. None. And when we're talking untreated water, uh, Kathleen, we're talking about uh, well and then supplemental with uh, CCWD water. Is that correct on untreated uh, customer? No. Um, so the untreated customer has their own well for potable water. Oh. And we, we supply them basically what we call raw water or untreated water. Um, and that water right now comes from Upper Crystal Springs Reservoir, um, and it goes to the raw water customer. And no so, yeah. So, um, so yeah. So we've met with them already to give them a heads up, and um, uh, and so they know that you know what direction we were taking with this ordinance. Um, but we. Yes, it'll be very difficult with our restrictions from um, SFPUC with our new allocation to meet their demand. Other questions? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. No questions. Okay. Um, so then, um, under 4E, um, again, um, there's specific prohibitions for homeowners associations and community service organizations. This wording was taken straight from the state's um, emergency conservation regulations. So again, that's another place where we're just incorporating the state's regulation into our ordinance. Then section five covers enforcement um, and to, so enforcement uh, with this um, uh, beginning to go into stage two, is we're really going to focus on education. We're not going to focus on uh, enforcement, any kind of fines, or uh, hopefully we won't have to turn anybody off for, for um, violating the rules. Um, we, were, we didn't have to do that during the last drought. Our customers were very cooperative, and once you explain to them what the rules were and help them uh, understand them, we really had a really high compliance rate with it. So I'm expecting the same thing again this round. Um, so then in section six, we have, if they wanted to appeal anything um, in this ordinance, what the procedure for that is. And then um, on section, I mean, then we have effective date and then some legal language on severability. And then section um, nine has pu the publication information. So I tried to, and I highlighted in yellow uh, what our plan is for some of the um, outreach that's either required, but some of this isn't required. It's also, we're just, uh, we thought uh, a good thing to do and we've done it in the past. And it was pointed out to me that um, on the third bullet, the where it says the public hearing notice was posted at the district's headquarters at least 14 days prior to the public hearing. I have that to be uh, March 11th. It probably should be um, posted on March 10th to, to be 14 days. So I will make that change. 
Thank you. For today. Um, so, yeah, so if you have any, so when we have the public hearing, I'll do a, a PowerPoint presentation, something more friendly for, um, uh, for our customers to um, uh, review and to and to see with you know specific things highlighted uh, to try to make it more understandable. Um, but for this first presentation, I thought I would keep it simple and just uh, go through the ordinance and an answer any specific questions you might have. I have one comment, Mr. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. If we I, I think it's very important for us to really review and stress on all our appeals cases in our public hearing, that first paragraph under background, uh, there's 36 pages in this, uh, 16 front and, uh, front and back. But that first paragraph really says a lot that if we didn't wake up in the morning and say, we're gonna throw this at you folks. This is sent down by the powers in Sacramento, whether we agree or not, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, the one thing that really triggered uh, the district to take this action is is that we're getting an allocation from SFPUC. Um, that was probably the most motivating factor for our staff to take action on this. Thank you. <clears throat> Good point, John. Um, other comments? Um, so by way of a little history, the Urban Water Management Committee had a couple of discussions with the staff knew about this. This was pretty well set up. We decided to make it available here at the board for review prior to the public hearing. So you had a chance to know what was coming. And uh, we appreciate staffs changing their schedule a bit to make it a week later than they had planned, but we still can meet the objective of getting this by the 24th of March, which is important. Number two, after review and thought it was, I couldn't think of any way to make this any better than Kathleen has made it. No matter how well I thought about it and how much I thought about it, there was just no way to modify it or do anything that didn't do what had to be done. And she's done that. So there's no question that time is of the essence. We need to get on with it. And so it's time to uh, do the work to set the public hearing. And I guess that's the item on the agenda that we have to discuss or uh, move forward on tonight, Mary, correct? Yes, that's correct. You will want to confirm the date of the public hearing. Okay, so is that a motion? Um, I don't believe uh, it needs to be a motion. Uh, I, I guess we should ask um, Patrick on that, but because um, we, I think we've already confirmed the availability of the board members and I'm, I'm doing this mainly for the, the public so that they okay. there's no confusion over when the public hearing is proposed to be on. Um, so I, I'm sorry, I think the, the, the board is in favor of moving forward and uh, doing a public hearing and we should ask staff to go for it. Common, everything's yep. okay? John. Mr. Chair, I think uh, Kathleen has been living it in the staff. I think we're going to get a lot of push on people that have already conserved water. And I know Kathleen. No, I know. No. Yeah, Kathleen lives it every day. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we're going to have to really ensure we cover that uh, kind of hostile discussion. Um, I think that you're right. I think that when this goes out, after people get to understand the uh, import, and even though they've done it in the past, they're going to see it again and they're going to have concerns. And so we're likely to have some feedback at the public hearing as well as beyond that. And uh, we just have to go for it because uh, we're here to make it, make it uh, work and give people the water they need in the long term, not just in the short term. And uh, so we've got to go for it. I appreciate the comments and uh, I'm not going to be surprised when they uh, bear fruit. <laughs> Any other comments? Yeah, and I think one last okay. one. So, I'm sorry. Uh, Go ahead, John. I, yeah, we have to really step stress that this board and staff and 
and employees are working really hard to be prepared for the unexpected that could happen to our area. So that's one of the words I want to have that be prepared for the unexpected. Okay. <clears throat> so what, Appreciate that. Where's any other comments? All right. Um, we go on to the next item of business, which is consider resolution 202205 20, approving the minimum purchase amendment to the amended and restated water agreement between the city and county of San Francisco and wholesale customers in Alameda County, San Mateo County, and San Clara County. Uh, you want to take that, Mary? Yes, I will. So really, it's well, we have this item, and then we have an another resolution, uh, a second item, which I'll talk about. Um, but basically, um, these um, are resolutions approving amendments to the water supply agreement and um, the Bosca agencies. And such um, resolutions um, require unanimous approval of all the member agencies. So each member agency is doing this um, process. So, uh, and so the first resolution approves a, a minimum purchase um, amendment to the agreement. So what I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm gonna share my screen because I wanna share a few slides that we received from Bosca and also that we can just, you know, give a quick uh, brief overview. Um, I am, I will say, I am not going to go through all the points on these, um, uh, on these, on these uh, uh, slides, but can you see my, uh, my uh, screen right now? Yeah. Okay. Um, right, it's here. Okay. I'll just, uh... okay. I so, um, basically, <laughs> what is a, a minimum purchase requirement? So when the um, water supply agreement was developed uh, for agencies with access to other sources of supplies not available to SFPUC or other wholesale customers were required to purchase a minimum annual quantity of water from the regional water system. And those four agents at least with the minimums include um, Alameda County, County, Milpitas, Mountain View, and Sunnyvale. And basically this, um, this um, minimum is a take or pay minimum purchase requirement. So you either buy the water or you um, pay a minimum. Uh, also any, um, but any changes to this minimum purchase requirement necessitates an amendment to the water supply agreement. So I'm not gonna read all this, but I just, you know, I wanna emphasize that basically this goes back to the, um, the 1984 settlement agreement and the, um, and the, the premise um, of the take or pay was that for the large Bosque um, agencies could choose to utilize water from other sources and not share in SFPUC's costs. So if an agency had a cheaper source of water, that agency could opt to use that source instead. And because SFPUC's costs are largely fixed and are shared proportionately by all the members, um, if these agencies decided that they didn't want to purchase from SFPUC, the other members would be faced to, um, with picking up the difference in the costs. So this minimum uh, purchase clause protects single source uh, um, customers of SFPUC and small, you know, uh, 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 customers who use very small, a very small portion of local sources. And again, the, the key premise was uh, of the minimum purchase clause was to protect the financial interests of the Bosca members. Um, and so I just, um, so what are the, the minimum purchase requirements for the four agencies? So um, uh, basically what, um, it, what's happened here is that nearly 40 years after this formula was put together, they're not necessarily working as envisioned. Um, and particularly given, uh, you know, changes in growth in the various communities and all, and largely in terms of like conservation and water use. Um, the city of Mountain View has uh, routinely paid the minimum in recent years, which equates to one and a half 
uh, million dollars plus um, for not um, using the minimum purchase. Whereas other Bosca agencies uh, may be up against their in the, uh, individual supply guarantees and the need for water such as East Palo Alto. So um, in addition, uh, but in addition to setting these minimums, these agencies are disincentivized um, to explore uh, and develop other local sources such as um, water reuse, for instance, um, that could benefit the whole regional water system. Um, so in the 2018-2019 uh, timeframe, the Bosque agencies um, with these minimums requested the Bosque membership to consider a mechanism to allow for transfers of, of these minimum purchases. Um, and again, the guiding principles in considering a new mechanism was that it, it, all the, the uh, financial interests of the um, member agencies would be, um, and supply interests would be protected. So, um, and looking at what are the key parameters of this amendment um, allows for um, what we call a paired transfer of minimum purchase and the individual supply guarantee. So um, what uh, it allows is that what, for these agencies with minimum purchases, they could they will transfer their, um, their supply guarantee, plus they will transfer the minimum to the other agency. Uh, the other... Um, it, um, the other part, though, is that the overarching premise, as I just mentioned, is that the formula cannot adversely uh, financially impact the other Bosque agencies, um, nor can it impact water supplies. So these um, last three bullets, which are difficult to understand, I'm not going to go through them, but basically the idea is that um, the transfer formula um, cannot take the um, transferer or the transferee off the hook for the minimum that's being transferred. So if um, if you know one agency transfers that and the uh, uh, the minimum purchase amount um, and the other agency doesn't use it, um, they can't be both off the hook for not, um, you know, uh, complying with this minimum purchase um, a, a agreement and um, cause the other Bosque agencies to have to cover additional costs. So as we're looking, you know, so again, it's, and I'm just highlighting on this one that it is a total, um, you know, the, the uh, minimum purchase quantity doesn't change, uh, and it's still an obligation that other agencies can't cover. So, in terms of you know benefits, I'm going to say that these you know they're in addition um, to taking down you know the existing barrier to water transfers. Um, it does it you know the idea is is that it also um, uh, removes. Uh, it uh, the um, a barrier for even with SFPUC, SFPUC right now they could have issues with CEQA um, or in getting um, in looking for alternative water supplies that we so desperately need um, because this uh, because they're not able to take benef beneficial use of all their supplies. So this allows for easy transfers between agencies, uh, you know, going forward. Um, I will say it's um, it's not going to it doesn't really impact us because we're, uh, but it just, it ultimately it will benefit the regional water system. So, so. Um, Mary and Chris, it's my impression oh. that this is a no, this is a no brainer that. Yeah, yeah, yes, I, 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 to, I would agree with we that. We have to approve it. I, it's not question of any sort. We just, we really have to say yes. I mean, Mary has oh. to. Yeah, we have to sign this and send it back. Is that correct? Yes, I, I, I wouldn't have any negotiating. But it, on the whole, it's better than it was, and we won't be affected by it going forward. Is that what I'm hearing? If we transfer water with somebody? Yeah, this really won't impact us. But okay. the only I mean, so thing it won't we don't cost have really much money. of a choice. I, other question? I'm just asking. <laughs> I mean, it's you're not obvious. 
I was a little, you know, it's hard to figure out what's going on here, frankly, without being an expert. But I, I think it's something we got to do because we got to do. Yeah. So, yep. so let me just, uh, I'll go with it. I just want to say a couple things because it impacts the, the next um, item um, on the yeah. agenda. So you can do both, think about both of these. But basically, the Second Amendment, um, it actually um, uh, confirms the arrangement between um, Mountain View and East Palo Alto. Um, a, a th a, a three years, or in 2017, um, they arranged a, a transfer of the supply um, guarantee from Mountain View to East Palo Alto, but the mechanics of the water supply agreement didn't allow them to transfer the minimum purchase between the agencies. So this has this this. Um, Amendment had to be done in parallel to the other amendment that's basically kind of um, putting this um, this agreement that was done several years ago on basically a similar track as to what we're approving in the other um, resolution. So, so the second one is also a no brainer in that we need to uh, approve it and go forward. Is that correct, Chris and Mary? Yes. Did I expect, or do we expect that we would see more like this going forward, or is this it for the short term? I never seen one like this before. So, will we ever see one again? You might someday, but I will tell you this. Okay. Years. Yes, really. No, so I think you've done a good job of trying to bring it to an understandable measure, but it's still tough. Hello, Ken. I move we approve uh, resolution 2022 05. Approving the minimum purchase amendment to the amended and restated water supply agreement between the city uh, and county of San Francisco and wholesale customers in Alameda County, San Mateo County, and Santa Clara County. I'll second that. Second. Chris. I'll second that. Okay. Take a take a roll call, please. Okay, Director Coverdale. Aye. Yes. Director Michelson. Yes. Director Reynolds? Yes. Vice President Muller? Aye. President Feldman? Yes. Um, can I then ask Ken to make a motion on the second one? I'd be happy to. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, approve resolution 2022 06, approving a minimum purchase transfer from the city of Mountain View to the city of East Palo Alto. And I have a second. Could have a good I'll, I'll second that again. Chris is seconded. Thank you. Roll and then call. can I make a comment? Yeah, make I, I think that any anything that we can do to support Bosca to create cooperation between the various agencies and allow for transfers that don't end up causing us any kind of financial burden as a member agent uh, agency. I think any of these things are wonderful. You know, this whole water. Uh, trading uh, is going to be the big increase because we don't really have much supply. So we have to be pretty creative with the way in which water gets distributed. So I, I think it's wonderful work. It's complex and it's complicated. It's not much fun to read. It's almost like Erasmus, <laughs> but I, I appreciate the intention and and I, I would support it heartily. If I may, I second that, John. Yeah, I'd like to just comment. Uh, uh, Director Coverdale made uh, great points there, but I want to really stress to hopefully our people viewing this meeting and our customers, we are not transferring or giving away of any of our water right. with this uh, recommendation and uh, motion. This is to pre prepare other Bosqua members to be able to handle that legally. Thank you. Good point. Okay. Any others? Comments, questions? Uh, with that, we'll move to the next item on the agenda. Do you want a roll call on that? We need to vote, yeah, I think. Sorry, roll call. Okay. Director Coverdale? Yes. Director Michelson? Yes. Director Reynolds? Yes. Vice President Muller? Aye. President Feldman? Yes. Hey, that Lisa's right on top of this. She's not letting anything slip by. That's great. All right, item. Item uh, D, 
waive the procedure requirements for sealed competitive bids and authorize the general manager to enter into a contractual agreement with Half Moon Bay Paving and Grading Inc. for Denison Road Storm Damage Repairs. Okay, Mary, take it away. I'm gonna give this one to James. Thank you, okay. Mary. As you know, we had some pretty good rains in October and December. Unfortunately, they have left us, uh, but they hit us pretty hard. Um, after after those intense rains, uh, there was normal than uh, higher than normal creek flows in Deniston Creek. The creek crossed the access road above Deniston Reservoir that uh, goes up to the treatment plant and also uh, provides access for Dave Leia's uh, you know back backfield. Uh, this went on for literally months. Uh, Director Muller was out there. He saw it. Um, the, the creek came across the road, uh, ran for, for quite a while over the road, uh, washed it out a bit, exposed a shallow drain pipe, and we need to fix it. And um, time is of the essence before it starts raining again. It's dried out enough now that we can get in there. And what we want to do is uh, harvest some soils from the spoils pile and also over uh, Leah's Road is a cooperative and uh, harvest some uh, soil there. So we're not doing a bunch of trucking and we're gonna raise the road up essentially about 30 inches uh, with a six inch base cap on it. And then this will keep the creek from crossing the road and washing it out and also uh, minimize the possibility of a wetland being created by this uh, flow of water across the road. So we're, uh, due, to the, due to the crunch in time, and uh, out of a, the essence of uh, efficiency, we did a uh, informal bid process with three contractors. Uh, pretty simple. We didn't feel like we needed to go through bids and specs, and we didn't really feel like we had the time. And the bid results came in with Half Moon Bay paving and grading well under the other contractors. Uh, so I think they're hungry for some work with Coastside, and we're happy to have them work for us. So what we're asking today is that you waive the procedural requirements for formal bidding for this type of work and uh, also authorize the general manager to enter into a contractual agreement with Half Moon Bay Paving and Grading for 83,913. And then just to clarify, this is about a 900 foot section of road. It's, it's quite, a bit of, uh, quite a bit of material. And if, I, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Um, thank you, James. Comments? I, I, just a very brief comment, I believe uh, again, to clarify that we are waiving the procedural requirements for this one specific job, not for others. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, I think we need to have that on the record. Sure. Okay. Other comments? Okay. Well, I think the informal uh, analysis and uh, estimate was uh, well done, I thought. And the price variance is so significant that it's clear that. Uh, this is something that uh, we should uh, move forward with. So I'm gonna have a motion to uh, uh, accept this uh, wage this procedure requirement. Anybody? Yeah, I'll make a motion. I gotta read it though, right? <laughs> All right, we have the procedural requirements for a sealed competitive bids and the authorized general manager to enter the contractual agreement and the Half Moon Bay paving grading for Deniston's road storm damages. Second, please. I will second it. Okay, thank you for the second, Lisa. Uh, no Director problem. Coverdale. Aye. Director Michelson. Yes. Director Reynolds. Yes. Vice President Muller? Aye. President Feldman? Yes. Okay, next is item E. Weigh the procedure requirements in the district policy procedures for award of contracts and authorize the general manager to enter into an agreement with Pump Repair Service Company for the Crystal Springs pump to replacement, including purchase of a new spare pump and 350 horsepower motor. Materials refurbishment of old 350 horsepower motor and installation. Again, um, um, I'll turn it over to Mary, who I believe will then turn it over to James. Yes, I'll turn it over to James. So. Thank, you, thank you, Mary. Um, as you all know, Crystal Springs is a very critical pump station for us for a raw water supply, uh, particularly during the um, fall and summer. Uh, months. 
We uh, have gotten pretty good run out of pump two. Um, typically we'll get anywhere from uh, eight, eight to obviously 13 years. 13 years is uh, kind of on the higher end and 19,000 hours is on the higher end of hours um, for, for these pumps. Do, especially due to the uh, procurement issues that we've been experiencing with the Nunes project, um, staff is uh, very val uh, in a valid way raised the issue of what if we can't get parts in P2 crashes in the middle of summer. So what we're asking is that we um, take the spare that's actually at Crystal Springs and we put that in with the uh, necessary parts. And if you want to look at the bid, there's a table on the second page of the, um, of the staff report. Um, we want to replace the pump that we're going to pull off the floor. Um, that's on page one. We want a new uh, motor on this when we install it, and that's on page two, the cost there. And then we'll need all the materials to connect the motor to essentially the pump. And that brings the water to the surface. That's on page three. We want to refurbish this old motor. It's put in a lot of hours. It's still behaving fine, but we want to refurbish it and keep it as a spare. And this way we're going to have two spare 350s and a spare 500, which really prepares us for disasters at that station. And then labor, of course, from pump repair is uh, uh, on page five. So uh, again, we're gonna we're gonna pull off the old motor, refurbish it, keep it as a spare. We're gonna buy a new motor, take the spare pump that's on the floor, put it in there, and then we're gonna purchase another spare. So we'll have a spare for the P1, P2 position, and also the spare that's there for the P3 position. Um, Due to, due to uh, we want to stick with Flowway. That's the established engineered pump that has a very specific high head capacity. Uh, the head on this pump is uh, over 800 feet, which is uh, a, a lot of pressure to lift, a lot of energy to lift. We don't want to go to a different brand and try to experiment with uh, another pump brand um, because of that. And we don't want to um, uh, have to stock parts for different brand pumps um, or have them available through our vendors. We particularly think uh, Pump Repair Service is the, uh, the firm to do this. One, they are the sole uh, vendor of the Flowway pumps. So if anyone buys a Flowway pump uh, in this area, they're gonna have to purchase through Pump Repair Service. So that'll save us some markup. Pump Repair is really the only pump provider that has worked on Crystal Springs. We're very protective of this very uh, critical facility. So we think they are best suited um, due to their past performance of maintaining that station and um, helping us out in, in tough situations. And we would also, um, we're requesting, let me go back to the front here, to waive the procedural requirements for this purchase and this project and the district's policies and procedures for award of contracts and author authorize the GM to enter an agreement with Pump Repair Service to reinstall Pump 2 refurbish the motor and get us a spare. Um, I know that's a lot to think about and I'm happy to clarify any questions that you may have. Thank you. Any questions, John? Yeah, I, I think uh, James, you did an excellent job making this pres presentation. You said it very well that uh, everywhere we're looking out there, there's a big delay on parts. And as I said earlier, we have to be prepared for the unexpected and you've stepped up with this, and I thank you for that. Uh, the one thing about the spare, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm getting from my Valley Farmer friends, people are stealing a lot of uh, surplus equipment or not even active equipment, so we got to make sure that new spare pump is under a real good lock and key. Thank you. But, but good job on we'll, that. We'll do. Thank you. Uh, okay, any other comments? Uh, sounds like everybody's uh, on board here, and so I'll need a motion. Chris and I went out to the site and went through this with staff and and um, asked a lot of questions, uh, dug around, and and we think we I agree with with James's assessment. I think this is a good plan forward. I do think it's it's uh, important. I don't know if any of you saw the price of of nickel today but it, it went nuts and oh, it a component yeah a nickel's a component in, in making these pumps so i think that yeah. getting this uh procured is is timely and smart yeah <laughs> okay yeah, i agree thank you thank you so the facilities committee had their oversight on this as well
Yeah, yeah, we were there. Oh, I can make a motion. Sorry, um, I was, I make a motion that we waive the procedure requirements, the district's policies and procedures for the award of contracts and authorization the general manager to enter into an agreement with Pump Repair Service Company for the Crystal Springs Pump Two replacement, including purchase of a new spare pump and 350 horsepower motor materials, refurbishment of old 350 horsepower motor, and installation. And I, I will second that. Can I have a second? In an amount not to exceed $246,618. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Pat. And, and I, I will second that with it, with the amount now included. Technical question, uh, James, how much does one of these things weigh? The pump? The, the pump or the motor or all of it? Both, I don't know, each separate. How much? I mean, approximately, you know, pretty heavy things, right? Uh, I would say the pump's got to be thousand pounds i just guess okay and the motor 700 pounds okay so they're not like catalytic converters right <laughs> you just can't no no you can't put it in your pocket off, and walk take off. them off the ground and walk away i'm just checking i was just just a question right, no, all right look uh, i'm more i'm more comfortable now i thought you know maybe we got a potential catalytic converter problem going here but we don't all right so and, and there, there, there is the uc staff that resides very close to that station <laughs> so we, we 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 have a guard close by. No, I I know. I, I, I'm I mean, just, and he's not very nice. That. It's not that convenient to go there. Right. I'm sorry. Good. Lisa. Okay, Director Coverdale. Hi. Director Michelson. Yes. Director Reynolds. Yes. Vice President Muller. Aye. President Feldman. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item. Next thing on the agenda. For rule loan terms with First Foundation Bank for the financing of capital improvements to the water system. This is Mary. Go for it. Okay, thank you. So we are coming down to the wire, and I'll say literally a seven million dollar one cool. um, with the um, this week with our financing for Nuna's water treatment plant. Um, improvement project. And so um, I, I want to welcome Brant Smith again, who has joined us today. Uh, and we'll, we'll just you know, kind of walk through the loan very quickly. I, you know, I just want to say that we started the process in the fall and board engaged Brant um, as uh, the, our municipal uh, financial advisor. Um, and he, oh, he's with um, Baxter McCarley Berry and Company, and we also engaged uh, the firm of Jones Hall to be on um, council. So at our board meeting on February 8th, the board approved a resolution uh, which, um, uh, which provided approval of a loan and a loan agreement, uh, the designation of the loan as bank qualified for tax purposes, um, the authorization of Backstrom and Jones um, Hall um, as, um, and authorization of the general manager to execute the loan. So we um, received the um, eight proposals back in early um, uh, February. And so um, we, we decided we had a special meeting on February 17th and um, Brant walked through the, um, the proposals with us and we agreed to you know, continue to move forward. So I am, uh, I'm actually going to share my screen, but I'll also, um, Brand, do you want to say a few words about this? And we can, we can maybe, I, I get pull up your, um, just your um, presentation here. Good evening, everyone. Um, as Mary mentioned, we got the responses from the banks uh, just right after February's board meeting. Uh, we sent the RFP out to 20 banks. We had eight responses, as Mary mentioned. First Foundation Bank came in at a 223, which is a fantastic rate. Um, eight responses from lenders was also a healthy response from the lending community. Um, First Foundation Bank is a California community bank. They've been in business for a little over 30 years. They're headquartered out of Irvine and they have branches uh, up and down the state. And the team we're working with at First Foundation is out of their Roseville offices. Um, after we selected First Foundation, we've just been going back and forth a little bit on not too much negotiation. I think the only real change, Mary, we switched uh, the 
interest and principal payment cycle from April, October, and change that to March, September. And in doing so, that saves about $16,000 during the first year. So that was a little, a little plus there. Um, so 223 is very low. Um, obviously, we wanted to go out quick, not quickly, but you know, expected a lot of volatility with interest rates due to inflation, as you mentioned, nickel and, and going on. I think the uh, geopolitical fears with Ukraine right now is really kind of fight to quality to treasuries. So rates are actually have come down a little bit, but I still think everybody's got the inflationary fear. So um, that's why we wanted to get out and make sure we could lock in a rate ahead of time if there was any more volatility. So very good rate at 223. Uh, if you compare that to mortgage rates and other types of loans, again, it's a tax exam, but it's, it's fantastic. Um, if you recall in 2018, we refinanced uh, an existing loan. That was a 14 year loan we did and we uh, were able to get 2.85% for the district. So we're out in today's market, we're doing a 20 year loan fixed rate at 223. Uh, fees, we were able to bring fees down a little bit versus the 2018 transaction. Uh, we worked with the district last time on a $5 million transaction, our fees for the entire financing team were just about $79,000. Uh, this, this time for the $7 million transaction, we're coming in just below 72,000, so slightly lower. So the transaction fees are about 1% of the overall loan amount. Um, and uh, I think compared to recent peers, uh, North Coast County Water District did a financing back in November. They did a 30-year financing uh, for about 20 million. Their borrowing cost was 2.71 versus your 2.23. So you're able to come in about almost half a percentage lower for your rate for a 20-year loan. Uh, they paid 375,000 in fees. Uh, Coastline was able to come in at 72, so you had about one fifth the transactional costs versus up here. So I think you guys really shine for the coast right now. You guys got a fantastic loan. Um, Mary, is there anything else you want me to go over? To no, I, um, so where we're at is um, I have to send in the signature pages tomorrow for the loan agreement. And we and we've given wire instructions, and we should have seven million in our bank account on Friday. Oh boy! So we're now, very uh, excited. No yeah. comments, John, Mr. Chair, uh, General Manager signs, and also uh, uh, the board chair uh, co-signs with that, Mary. I'm not sure how that works. Uh, yes, President Feldman signed. Yeah. Okay. The it was signed today. I'm sorry, yesterday. Well, this house is pretty so, well. Uh, it's all set. We're all set to go. Good to go. So, uh, um, good deal. Good deal. I think uh, all things being considered, uh, where things are going, what the rates are doing, uh, and the general nature of the unknowns, we got a we got a time just in time and a great deal to boot. Thanks a lot for the work, Brent. Appreciate you so much for the opportunity. Really job. Thank you, Brent. Appreciate and, uh, working with the district you. again. Super. Yep. Great. Okay, so no, nothing's required on this. It's just information at this point. Very good. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Brent. Thank you. Okay, Gene Nunez, treatment plan upgrades project. Update number second, I'll turn it over to James. Hello, good evening. I'm happy to say that the project is still making good progress. Um, we are still at a, a net zero amount on the change orders. Um, and I'd like to just kind of move through what we've done. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble with my computer view here. Um, they've constructed the V ditches, uh, the access road, um, they're starting to grade and uh, do excavation for the caustic soda process area. They poured pads there, electrical conduits going in, form work. Um, uh, going forward, we're going to be doing the snail, uh, the snail wall, so soil nail wall construction, concrete coating of the said basin. They blasted this week. They're getting inspected, I believe, tomorrow or today and ready to coat this week of the inside of the new said basin. Uh, eight inch filter waste piping's going in installation of the underground 12 inch filtered waste pipe and the additional drainage system. I kind of like to move to the pictures if you don't mind. Uh, top left corner, you see that's an aerial of the new caustic pad and uh, where the MCC is going and the blowers and the pumps. 
Thank you, Mary. If you don't mind uh, scrolling to the last um, one there. Sorry, I got ahead of you. Uh, second picture on the top is the conduit going in that's gonna be serving all this area. So they're a little out of sequence, but uh, very clear pictures. The one on the uh, top right, that is the settled water piping coming from the new said basin going past the old said basin to the effluent launder. Uh, and then that basically feeds the filters. Uh, lower left picture, you can see all the conduit that they put in there. Um, the ranger's been doing a fantastic job of uh, being organized and uh, making strides quickly. Um, they did a great job on the conduit. You can see the pour there of the caustic area. You can even see the little stop sign shape for the caustic tank. Um, middle uh, middle bottom picture, that is the subtle water piping that I showed you earlier that connects to the uh, effluent launder. And then the lower right picture is before they connected um, to the uh, effluent launder that feeds the filters. So we're, uh, we're continuing to make good progress here. Um, we are, we are we've got growing concerns about um, procurement. Uh, there might be some delays, um, but Rangers really doing their best and uh, we're going to give you updates as soon as we have them. But uh, so far, so good. The project's going very well. And if you have any questions, I'm, I'm happy to respond. Questions, comments <clears throat> from the board? Good. Uh, no, I don't hear any. I think it's a pretty uh, explicit uh, report. It looks like things are going well at this point. And uh, and you're uh, making your numbers and your progress. So let's keep hoping that uh, you can do it in this fashion and uh, keep us posted as you do on a monthly basis. So now we uh, have money uh, coming in to be able to uh, cover all this uh, going forward, which is even better news in some ways. So thanks again. You're Alrighty. welcome. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Next uh, item. Consider a resolution 202207 concerning concurring a nomination of John A. Sweet of Alameda County Water District to the Executive Committee of the Association of California Water Agencies Joint Powers Insurance Authority, ACWA JPIA. ACWA JPIA, right? Yeah, uh, I'll let Mary uh, comment and uh, whoever else. Yeah, John. Yeah, if I may, uh, I think. Uh, he was one of the uh, interested parties for the position that I received. And boy, he has got a record of water world and PhDs and all those good things. And I kind of told him just a practical guy. So maybe they like that over, but John, I think is very well qualified for this uh, to make a motion to uh, uh, consider him in the nomination. When, uh Mary got this request from Alameda County Water District uh, General Manager, I believe, to right. not yes. to support the nomination. That's what we're doing. And <laughs> need three associated agencies <laughs> to support the nomination. And I thought it would be good to be good neighbors. It can't hurt for us to be helpful to our fellow water districts because we never know when we need their help as well. And so for that reason, we pursued this and I know him from my region five days as well on the board and, uh, and ACWA as well. And I thought he was a pretty, pretty good guy and he's done a lot and has a lot of vast experience and we're members of JPAA and we want the best we can get to be uh, working that for us as well on the executive committee. I would Kennedy, like- Do I have a nomination, John? I would like to make the motion if I would, please. Um, Adopt resolution 22-07, concurring in the nomination of John H. Weed of Alameda County Water District to the Executive Committee of the Association of California Water Agencies, Joint Powers Insurance Authority, Aqua JPIA. I have a second? I'll, I'll, I'll second that. And yes, he is a fellow uh, Bosca board member. And I really do enjoy him. He says it the way it is, and it needs to be said the way it is. And he does a good job of it. So absolutely. <laughs> Great. Okay, I uh, can I have a roll call, please. Uh, Director Coverdale. Yes. Director Michelson. Yes. Director Reynolds. Director Reynolds. John. 
Oh, he raised his hand. Okay. Vice okay. President Mueller. I will say I, and I will say that uh, he definitely did go over his three minute limit. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you can talk. <laughs> uh, President Feldman. Yes. Okay. And uh, next item I, COVID-19 and reopening of district office update. Mary, you want to give us something? Okay. Um, and I just want to make sure, Lisa, you caught the, um, the uh, Director Reynolds has his hand. Yes, I saw that right here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, President Feldman asked if I would add an agenda item um, so that we could update the board on staff's current thoughts about uh, reopening the district office to the public. So as everyone knows, we have been closed since March, 2020. Um, and you know, we have had some lifting of the mask mandates. Um, I actually, in our office, I've made it optional um, at, uh, right now. Um, but we are, you know, we, we are starting to think about when do we reopen and we know we need to be customer service friendly. So uh, right now we're, we're thinking around um, early May. Um, the reason being, we have a we have a new employee um, who'll be starting, who will be taking um, Lisa's spot, and we have to do some training and get staff organized. So um, we would, you know, so we would like to, uh, you know, we need to get ready for opening. Uh, and uh, the other point I would like to mention is we are thinking about. Um, reducing our hours. Um, and this is something, you know, we're still talking about um, some of the other, we've been pulling some of the other water agencies around. For example, Mid, Mid Peninsula, um, they've moved to being open from eight to two, Monday through Thursday. And we, um, and they said they haven't it, um, seen any um, pushback from any of their customers on that um, because they've always been open. And so we're, we're thinking that, you know, we might want to um, go with a little bit more, you know, limited hours or days of the week. So thinking potentially like, you know, uh, Tuesday, to, Tuesday to Thursday, nine to three and then um, other days by appointment. So something, so that that's kind of the, the, the you know, what we're thinking about right now. And, um, you know, we know we need to get open to the public, um, but we're, um, we also want to be, you know, we want to be cognizant too of, we, we want to make sure we don't have any other searches of COVID and various things, but we are, we want to push forward. So, um, does they have it? Oh, yes. Comments, John. Um, go ahead. Uh, again, uh, I think on the uh, hours, uh, look down the street at Bank of America and their hours. <laughs> you guys are open really great, but boy, this last week, I don't think they were open hardly at all for Bank of America. But uh, the other question I would have, uh, have we made headway on the ventilation window in the... Uh, uh, and then yes. number two, I think with what we're going through in March, I personally would be supportive of looking at early May uh, personally. Okay. Other comments, Ken, uh, Chris. Um, I just, I just think it'll be nice to get back to face-to-face -face meetings. I yes. mean, the Zoom meetings have been productive and. We're fortunate to have the technology, but uh, there's a lot to be said to uh, having everyone in the meeting in the room to, uh, you know, you you can tell a lot about a person's thoughts by their body language and posture and things like that. And, and that's important, okay. significant. And sometimes I think the technology causes a little lack of humanity. And so I think it'll be nice to have that as long as it's safe. I mean, I'm not advocating uh, anything that's not safe, but I think everyone in this group is uh, vaccinated and boosted, aren't we all? Yeah. Yes. And um, you know, maybe there has to be a requirement or something of people coming to the meeting to be right. 
That's, we have to have some that. kind of rules. But at least some you know, that, those are things to think about. You know? So, Mary, you're, you're saying May, early May, which means that the board meeting could be in May as well. So I'm okay. I think that's a good goal. And you report to us in April with that. You should give us a report in April on how your planning for that is going. If, in fact, we do open and the office is open and we do have meetings, I'm sure you'd have to think about some protocol for people based on the mask regulations at that time and uh, things like that as to what the procedures would be and what requirements there would be for entry and to the meetings and into the building, et cetera. So I, I think that has to be put on the table so we're all clear on what we're signing up for, basically. Yeah. But I think if we do it, we have to do it the whole way. I mean, you know, we're open. Now, as far as timing, as far as people's thoughts on part-time, short, shorter hours, different hours, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I've had some thoughts about it. Customer service is a tricky thing. It's a hard thing, but it's a thing that we pride ourselves on. And being there part of the week, some ways is, you know, not being there all the time for people. And I'm not sure what other people think, but I'd be happy to hear other people's thoughts. I mean, two days a week is fine, but I don't know. I'm just thinking what you folks think. Oh, thank, thanks for bringing that up. I, you know, sooner rather than later, um, I'm not a big fan of part time, various days of the week. I am nine to five, Monday to Friday kind of person. I mean, that's, I, I'll go that far. Uh, I, I like the doors open, you know, you just, I, I don't even like going to the El Granada post office. I go to the Half Moon Bay post office because they're always open. The El Granada one, you know, I, I, they're closed for lunch. You know, they close, you know, and I think they close until two or so, so. It's just when I want to go to the water district, when I want to go to the, to the post office, I go during what are traditional working hours and I expect a door open, much like when I go to the bank or I go to the grocery store. Um, limited hours, limited days, I'm not a fan of. We are a public agency. Our charge is to serve the public. You know, if a grocery store can be open, you know, till 10 in the evening or whatever, it's not like people are gonna spend an hour, they're gonna come, they're gonna drop off their their bill and they're gonna leave. You know, contact time, in, in the worst of COVID, contact time was still 15 minutes. Someone paying a bill, the interaction is going to be a minute or two. Let's get back to normal. You know, the Queen of England, 95 years old. COVID was a sniffle. Let's move on. Thank you. I think I think Mary's point was more the the fact that you don't need it to nine by nine nine o'clock every day and get the work done and people have enough time to get when they have to. I'm not sure it's a COVID thing, just as much as maybe a different way of running the business. I, any other comments on that? I'm not disagreeing with you, by the way, Chris. <laughs> we're a small community. We're not North Coast. Yeah. We're a little smaller. We have, we, this is much more of an interesting audience in this community. And I always felt that that's for 49 years or however many years, we've been 75, we've been here. We've operated that way. And I don't know, it's just to change it like this with the COVID maybe is, you know, the rationale just doesn't feel right in my tummy, but maybe you folks don't feel it's a big deal. I sort of feel that way because, you know, I think Coast Side County Water District represents somebody who's always been there to play and been there on the block and been there to be available. And that's how we're known. And that's one of the reasons over the last 15, 20 years, we've managed to place ourselves above the norm in our transparency and in our ability to provide service to the community. That's why we stand out as a good and a, one of the better public agencies uh, in the area. That, that's my opinion anyway, because we've been that way. Yes, John. Yeah, may I suggest, is it possible, keeping it very simple, to uh, kind of record what public uh, visitors we have uh, during the week, is there such a thing we could do that just to kind of get an idea on the future uh, plans of what uh, we plan to do in the office? I don't know how many permit requests you get and things like that, or city staff and things like that. Just if we could just do have a little list and someone could little check off there, if that's possible. I will say 
say most everything happens over the phone. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, Ken, I'm sorry. Oh, it's no, no problem, thank you. You know, from my perspective, I always thought we needed to have a pickle barrel, you know, right outside the counter because it used to be sort of a hangout place, uh, Coastside County Water District. And when the office got reformatted with that counter, actually changed it uh, radically. You know, it, it used to be a lot more, you were just kind of in the, in the middle of the working group. Um, I think that's appealing, but you know, there's always room for modification. And I think that, um, you know, those are recommendations that we need to come from, from Mary and the staff, I think. Um, I've always appreciated it, but I know that it's difficult, and Lisa could probably speak to this, you know, your, your work and somebody comes in and they're gonna yak it all up and you know, the next thing, who knows, but that's kind of part of the friendliness of a small town as well. And and I would have to say, I, I appreciate it, but um, but if, if there's a work reason, you know, more productivity or it, it, you know, we're still getting the job done without losing customer satisfaction. I think we have to listen to that too. Right, I agree. Uh, you know, so Mary, you know, these are some thoughts. Any of the other comments, Glenn? Nope. Well, okay. Well, this, yeah, we'll certainly, um, you know, discuss and, you know, nothing set in stone, um, but we are thinking about things. Okay. Well, we'll look for more information going forward and uh, talk more next month. Appreciate the input from everybody. And um, uh, go on to the next item on the agenda. I'm glad to hear we're going to be seeing people face to face pretty soon. General Manager's report. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, first thing, we had our um, SFP UC annual meeting uh, this past month. And so at that meeting, um, one of the items they reported on was the proposed um, rate increase to be effective on July 1st, 2022. So they are, so the, the rate increase they've um, proposed is 15.9%. Now, we, we haven't had a rate increase for a few years, but that's because of we've had this balancing account. And uh, so any cost increases were kind of covered by this balancing account, but now we're running out of the balancing account. And so they're having this increase. Um, the other piece of this is they are, um, they've basically projected lower um, revenue, um, given what we, um, the, the water usage and the allocations with the drought. So they don't, you know, for the wholesale customers, they don't necessarily have this a drought rate, but they're incorporating some of their rate increases or, you know, in, within just their general rate. So they're at 15.9%. The next year they're, um, projecting 10.9% and then zero for the next three years after that. Okay. okay, well, it's information, not much uh, we have to do to forestall it. We just have to know we're providing for its inclusion in our budgeting going forward when we start getting ready to do that. Yes, ma'am. Oh, so so Mary, what will an acre foot of water cost us from our uh, with the new rate increase? Uh, let me get back to you on that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'd like just for curiosity. Okay, I'll get back to you on that. Um, the second item I'm reporting on is that we sent out a, a letter um, last week on opposed and less amended on a bill, a trailer bill that uh, was uh, is basically wanting to take some of our ERAF money and move it to the state coffers. So it would impact us by about $111,000 a year if this trailer bill goes through. So hopefully this won't go through and we can keep our money. <laughs> so. Well, I jump in right there, Mary. I mean, this is almost absurd because look at the money they're dishing out throughout the whole state. And here they want to put on a viable, reliable district and take that sum away. I, I just uh -huh. I can't comprehend it. It's disgusting. 
Yeah, Newsom gave away $30 billion to international crime syndicates. I mean, and, and now he's coming to us for 100000 Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, this is beyond the pale. Thank you. Ken? Um, Mary, I, I wanted to compliment you on the letter. Yes. Yeah. When I read that letter, I was so impressed. <laughs> it's the way you stated our case, uh, the description, the backup uh, numbers. I mean, I, honestly, I just thought it was incredibly well written. In well, fact, it was written if, for me, except our section. <laughs> well, I if Patrick we, wrote that. Well, we yeah. commend Is the it, writers of the letter for their initiative in taking the bull by the horns, putting it together and getting it the hell out of here to where it belongs. So appreciate that. And uh, you are absolutely right to do this. We all commend you and uh, we thank you for getting it out sooner rather than later. Yeah. Any other comments? The next thing on the agenda for you. Yeah, well, I will say I thank you to Lisa too, because she, did, she for, ran the fire drill for me. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. <laughs> um, the next item is that um, we wanted to report that at the request of the city, um, we, um, uh, President Feldman and um, uh, Director Coverdell and Ka uh, Kathleen uh, and I had a meeting with um, the mayor and vice mayor and the city manager and the, um, and the director of public works. And so we had that uh, this meeting last week, and um, they wanted to talk about the drought. So we, we um, Kathleen gave a great drought update. We spoke a little bit about the urban water management plan, and then we also um, spoke a little about um, the future of, of water reuse. So um, it's you know no decisions made, but we want to work cooperatively um, and uh, cooperatively and move forward. So. Anyway, uh, I don't know if anybody else wants to say anything about that, but <laughs> uh, I've lived it. <laughs> I'm waiting for Ken. <clears throat> um, I, I thought it was a, a great uh, meeting, a great opening, I guess you would say. Um, it was kind of frustrating because the meeting was set up with little time limits for yeah. each of these items. And the first three items were five minute time limits. And I think the first item was about 15 and second one was about 10. And so it started to fall in a, in a funny way. But I think the city is sincere. Um, you know, I, I think the best thing that came out of the meeting for me was the idea that there would be some kind of a list of uh, cooperations between the city and Coastside County District, the two of us, and that um, I, there was an encouragement that until we could reach some terms of agreement and we would have the city's support, uh, that we would feel um, anxious about moving forward. We wanted to be confident that we had a, a full partner in uh, talking about uh, water reuse. So I thought that was a great step. Uh, Kathleen was marvelous. Um, she did a great job uh, on on every one of the points, but also on the water reuse. and uh, And Mary was was excellent. Uh, it was interesting to I'd never met the director of public works for Half Moon Bay, but he was well informed and had some good ideas. And so there there's a little bit of motion there, and and I think that the only downside is trying to figure out how to fabricate this agreement and uh, make sure the board uh, approves that agreement and then be able to move forward with some confidence. Uh, I, I agree with Ken. I mean, uh, secondary thing he said, it was a constructive and informative meeting. Mary said, we talked about the, the future of reusable water reuse and recycling, but we also did a little historical uh, assessment and review. And I think that opened some people's eyes. So if nothing else, we got some information out on the table to the members there about what uh, what was, uh, what had happened and how we hope to avoid that and those things uh, occurring again in the future. And Ken's pointed out how we would hope to do that. So 
I thought it showed that there was some common interest in making some headway going forward. That's a fair assessment. I think, what do you think, Mary? I think. Okay. Yeah. Good meeting. Any other comments, questions? Okay, thanks. And um, the, the last item on I just had is that we've um, finalized our 75th anniversary logo. So you're starting to see this around and we're looking forward to having a celebration in July. So more to come and we'll want and we will want the board to input on our our celebration. So <laughs> Morning. I'm starting to see the logo on things that looks pretty nifty. I, I like it. And it's multiple varieties of logo, as it were. And uh, good job to the folks that uh, streamed yeah. it up and published it. And uh, let's hope it catches the attention of the public and shows them we've been around for quite a while, quite a while, doing good work for the community. If nothing else, uh, they know we're here to stay. Huh? We're, we're a keeper. Yes, John. I'd like to uh, suggest that if we could invite uh, uh, past uh, board uh, members and also past staff members, uh, if who's ever left standing, I guess a better way to put it. And I remember seeing something, and I'm trying to find it in my history books. When the district was formed, the vote count of North County, um, uh, Montero, Moss Beach, uh, there was like five no votes that did want did not want to join CCWD in that year. So I know there's a record somewhere out there and I just can't find it right now. But I think that would be fascinating to see the number of votes, 25 or 30 that voted in favor of forming the district. Well, whatever we time you have to, you know, assemble that is fine, but we're looking forward to what you have in mind for us for that point celebration as it were and uh, keep Good. us posted <clears throat> okay the me. superintendent of operations report mr durbin yes um I, i'm happy to say that i think we're going to have a record year for the pillar Cedos wells and my hat goes off to operations staff that have really figured out how to fine tune those wells to get as much water uh, as possible when it's available so we're still running known as um, essentially at 600 gallons a minute uh, with wash water recovery. So we're getting about 500, 550 out of the wells now. Um, so I'm really, really proud of staff of how they've approached maximizing that extraction because we unfortunately have to shut down April 1st. Um, Deniston yep. is uh, making up the difference with another local source. Uh, it's been it's been coming along. Uh, lots of flexibility there to run four to 600 gallons a minute when needed, depending on demand. So we're happy to say that we're pulling some local water there. Um, a little bit of Crystal Springs, but not much. It's more as a backup, so we don't have to run out to the well field to shut off wells if we make adjustments. Um, I'm very happy to say that our Cal OES PSPS grant money is going to be put to good use very soon. We're having a pre-con on Monday, and the tank's ready to go, so we should have that all in by the end of the month. We'll see what's happening uh, in terms of the schedule and how that goes. Uh, we're going to be having Ranger pipelines there as well to coordinate the tight space um, up there. So um, my hat goes off to Mary for pushing for that grant funding as well. Um, you've heard about the Nunes treatment plant, uh, EKI, uh, Grandview. I talked to John Sutter today. We're looking at going out to bid very soon. We should have a bid schedule and uh, going out to bid later this uh, latest month, early next. Uh, Pillar Cedos Crossing. The uh, engineer's estimate, I believe, was 372, and the low bidder was Golden Bay Construction at 341. So I'm sure uh, everyone's pleased that we were under the engineer's estimate, and Andrini was at 360, essentially, and uh, WR Ford and Associates was at 345. Uh, we determined that Golden Bay has uh, filled out their bids correctly, and we will be uh, looking to contract and award at the next board meeting for that very important project. Uh, tank replacement project at Cahill, uh, excuse me, at Carter Hill is going just great. Um, there was a couple of things with the geotech um, that caused a little delay to the 60%, but we should be seeing that in the next week or so. And if you have any questions, uh, I'm available. Any questions? 
James. Okay, uh, next thing on the agenda is uh, water and al water uh, resources uh, report. Kathleen, you want to take take the role here? Sure. Um, so this this is a report that I've been doing uh, every month, um, just to give an update on conditions and outreach. Uh, so uh, on page one of my staff report, I um, have the drought monitor um, map that shows the conditions across California. Um, I apologize for formatting, but I couldn't the file kept getting corrupted when I tried to download the map, so I had to kind of just do a, a screenshot of it. Um, but I just compare it to when California kind of was at its worst, where you see a lot of the dark reds. And then so we, we definitely, um, December definitely saved us. It's looking better, but still way too much uh, orange and red on that map. Um, so the next critical milestone, um, that the district's waiting on is uh, basically April 15th. So af after the April 1st, um, the last uh, snow survey of the season, um, it, we should get a, a better understanding of what SFP, if SFPUC is going to change from voluntary to mandatory um, with their allocations and uh, what what the total uh, water supply picture looks like for um, for SFPUC and and uh, and actually for the whole state. Um, right now, uh, the with the uh, the statewide snow water content, at least as of um, March first, we were uh, fifty five percent of average for the April first. Um, reading or 63% of uh, average for the March 1st reading. So, you know, um, definitely showing below, way below normal uh, snow, um, snow water content. Um, we're, the San Francisco system still hasn't managed to reach their 10% goal of uh, water savings for the, for the entire system. Um, we're hovering around eight. If you if from uh, if you go from July first to, to the end of February, we're hovering around like eight point five percent right now. Um, so we so San Francisco is definitely pushing for more water savings from all its customers. Um, and then on the last graph in my staff report comes straight from SFPC. It's uh, the title's regional water system total deliveries. Um, so I have a more updated number as of March 3rd, we were at 175 million gallons per day for the whole regional system for all the deliveries. Um, and, you know, it's a little higher, I think, than San Francisco would like. Um, so again, uh, you know, there's a big push. We, we got to really, the, all of the Bosca agencies, wholesale customers need to really push and try to get and get that total demand number down a little bit, a little bit more. Um, so any questions about the staff report? Okay. Questions, comments? Um, good job, Kathleen, as always, particularly on getting the ordinance ready to rumble here and um, for all the efforts. Okay, um, with, with um, that, I guess we're done with this session and I uh, plan to adjourn this, but stand by because we're going to have to go into uh, a special meeting right away. And for one item, which uh, Mary has uh, a closed session calendar, and uh, we uh, will attend to that shortly. So um, with all that, I'll adjourn the session at uh, 838 and uh, wish you all uh, well until I see you again in about 30 seconds, I guess. <laughs> okay, so I can open the next meeting right away, Pat, right? Yes. Okay, okay. so we'll call the special meeting order.